Hello YouTube, welcome once again to Arting with Petterup. Today I will be guiding you through a few different poses for whatever characters you may be trying to draw. Pony characters, I'm doing ponies again. Um, last time I drew just a simple basic um, standing position. This week I'm going to draw a couple different positions. Um, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to draw all of them all the way to completion. Uh, I'm going to be focusing more on sketch layers uh, just to help you get ready to draw and um, get ready to draw your characters in the proper anatomy and proper pose. So um, with, without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I have a white document here ready to draw on. Um, the last ev last video I did for y'all, uh, basically just do a very, I just drew a very simple uh, standing position. So yeah, it was basically Something like that from the last video. Well, when you're doing pony anatomy, you need to remember that um, just where the joints are and how they are laid out at any one time. This will help you uh, do your poses properly and uh, make sure your characters look natural and don't have any weird sort of anatomy and distortions and have broken arms and legs and that bend in wrong directions and it's just creepy and gross. Please don't do that! I noticed that a lot of artists, they like to skip over the uh, sketch layer and anatomy um, and go straight to the shading, the lighting, the coloring, all that stuff because they think that's the most important part and it is very important that's it's all key to making you know a great final product but if you want um, if you want a piece that is uh, really good then you should focus equally as much on the sketch layer your starting layer and uh, you can go back and make any necessary changes before you're finished it's a lot less work for you in the end um, if you just plan ahead so uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and uh, do a different pose, more like that. Alright, and just so you know, the um, skeleton is set up in the same way as this. So we have the hip here, joint here, joint here, that goes up, like these. There we go. So we have the same joints as here. Remember your leg joint has the thigh here and here, the calf here, calf here, and then what would be the foot on a human or a primate or something like that is this lower part of the leg here. So it's the same way. Um, this anatomy is the same kind of anatomy you would see on a lot of mammals, so like a cat or a dog, or a bunny rabbit, whatever you do. So like a bunny rabbit would have, you know, the big flat foot, and then the body like that. And it's like fluffy. So that would be the bunny rabbit foot, kind of like that. So with the pony foot, you take this flat part that's on the ground, and you stand it up on the tiptoes. Have the calf here and the thigh here. Just like that. They don't stand like humans, like this. That is incredibly creepy if you draw it that way. Please don't draw it that way. This is the appropriate way. So if I was gonna focus on the joints and showing you how they can curve, this is how um, the different joints would operate. This uh, upper joint here between the upper arm and lower arm uh, bends on this angle here, which you can see in all these images marked here. It's all the same joint. Then we have the uh, wrist, basically the wrist of a horse, which is here and here, kind of drawn in the wrong spot, but whatever. Also seen here, here, uh, and here, and here. So these are all the same joint, but then we also kind of have the fingertips. Again, I don't take these terms too seriously. It's just correlating between, you know, different parts of the mammal skeleton, which horses are mammals, so they have the same similar skeletal system. In fact, pretty much all animals have a very similar skeletal system, and they all work in similar ways. You just have to know which bones are which. 
Um, so we have the tips of the fingers, which would be the kind of the way the hoof is pointed. So it can be straight down or it can be curved in. That's this type here, 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 here. So if I were to get flesh out these very rough looking skeletons here, they would look as such. So there we go. That's the logic behind it. This is how it would look fleshed out, all completely drawn. Uh, this is how the skeletal, kind of skeletal, robotic skeletal system would look like. Similar to that. That's the front legs. Let me show you the back legs, which are a little bit more complicated. But it's still the same thought process, the same function. So here we have the basic standing position that we basically see here, fleshed out, that should look about the same. We have the calf with more muscle on the back than on the front because that's the direction it pulls more. Calf, the pointed little uh, top of the leg or top of the foot, I should say. Just like that. And I drew the thigh a little long, the thigh bone a little long. Uh, I can fix that in future versions. So let's put this thigh bone, let's fix the thigh bone. I'll make it this long instead, which is a little bit more cartoon realistic. So let's put this in a few different poses. So this is the basic standing pose, or like that we see here. Let's put it in a, like a backwards kind of running pose. And then, now to just show you what these would look like fleshed out. Now you'll notice again, just like a before, I drew the legs a little long because it's so much easier to show you the different joints when you draw them with longer limbs, more like real horses. But these are cartoon horses, so you need to make the limbs a little bit more stumpy, shorter, cuter, whatever you need to do. So this position here would match up with this. And then this position would match up with this. You can combine these on either side. So let's say we have the character in a dynamic position where we have one foot out like this. Behind. We have one coming forward, so let me turn down my opacity. Hip. Yeah, this foot coming out like this. This hoof out, stretched, and then this hoof, kind of not quite as outstretched, but so that could be a position you have your character in. And sometimes your poses will look awkward and that's just how, you know, it'll be realistic, I guess. But uh, you can take creative license and change things. Make the pose a little less realistic so that it looks a little better. That's completely acceptable. You can do that. I've done that before. Um, the tail would be out like this. Let's make this Applejack again. So yeah, there is, um, there's a decent running pose. So yeah, now that I've showed you some of the details, uh, let me do one big, uh, big piece, uh, kind of like a larger running version. Uh, I'll just go ahead and do it quickly. So I usually draw 
a jelly bean shape with the spine here. Hip. So her front hoof is just kind of dangling down because she's just flying along. Not taking things too seriously. So that's a, just a basic drawing done with the anatomy I explained earlier. It's all very simple once you kind of get used to it, once you figure it out, it'll come naturally to you. But you have to practice at it. I mean, uh, it took me quite a while to finally get the anatomy done. I had to draw about three Rainbow Dash presents, thousands and thousands of pictures. So um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't take you as long as it took me. Uh, hopefully. It'll just take a couple drawings of practice and not thousands and thousands of drawings. But it is all very important and uh, you will benefit greatly by setting some time aside and just working on your sketch layers, getting everything like nice and neat. And if you work in digital, you can tweak things in the post. So I like to tweak things like I didn't like how small the head was, so I'm just kind of tweaking some minor things. No biggie. And, um, use lots of bright colors in your sketch layers because if you use black it's going to be hard to trace over later so if you have a black but yeah, I might say this if you have a black sketch layer like that and you turn down the opacity to trace over it it's going to be hard to differentiate between your sketch layer and your final lines. So um, it's best to use a nice colorful layer. That way you can see a nice contrast between your sketch layer and your final layer. Uh, if you do draw in black, uh, your sketch layer in black, it's no problem. You can go in and just do a, like a layer overlay and uh, turn it red. So. Uh, no big deal if you don't use black or if you if you don't use black you can convert it later and may save yourself some time later so, anyway I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this drawing um, just so I have a good thumbnail There we go, finished. I didn't want to show you how I drew this specific picture because I don't want that really to be the focus of this video. Um, from this video, I hope that you've learned a little bit about how, a little bit about anatomy, how to set up your skeletal structure, and to focus more on your sketch layer itself. 
Um, I spend pretty much equally the same amount of time on my sketch layer as I do drawing the final version with, uh, with shading and color and lighting. So um, I would encourage you to do the same. Uh, put lots of time into you put a lot of time and effort and thought into your sketch layer and into um, learning anatomy and getting the proper anatomy. Um, because it's always a shame when I see like a post on DeviantArt that is otherwise fantastic because it has great lighting, great color, um, great shading, whatever, but it just has messed up anatomy. Like an arm is like the wrong length or it's shaped the wrong way, or it's bending the wrong way, or it just it just has the wrong wrong look to it. Um, and all of that could have been avoided if they just simply focused more on their sketch layer. So um, I would encourage you to do the same, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye everyone.